Welcome to speed painting the squat land train. Oh, wait, 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 let me back up. Okay, let me try again. Welcome to speed painting the Hecaton land fortress for the leagues of Otan. I won't go through all the steps of the assembly, but I do have some key pointers to share with you. The first thing I notice is the sponsoon weapons have two choices between the beamer and the bolter. Magnetizing this would be a little bit of a pain, so I just chose one and glued it in place. In game, I would just tell my opponent what it's equipped with. Also, the instruction says not to glue this so that you can swivel it in place. But from experience, the minute you put paint on these parts, they're gonna seize. So I just glued them in place and just make sure that the alignment of the weapon is in a direction that I'm okay with. To make the model a little bit more interesting, I make sure that each bolter or beamer is faced in a different direction just to make the model look a little bit more dynamic. Now the next part of the instructions confuse me a little bit. It says that the pan spectral scanner can be replaced by three weapons, but it doesn't say anything about the mater cannon being replaced by anything else. So I decided to ignore this little pane over here and just go ahead and mount the cannon. The instructions also did say to not glue the cannon in place, but I'm going to ignore that as well. I go ahead and mount it because I found that if you leave these loose fit, they will fall off when you're gaming or transporting. The rear hatch has four options. Now, you could take the easy route and just seal the hatch shut by gluing it in place like this. But honestly, you shouldn't. It's really much more fun if you're able to put the different weapon options in. The good part about it is that these just drop in place. You don't even need to magnetize them. They will stay in place because they just go straight down and they won't just fall out. Another weird bit in the instructions is if you have a pan spectral scanner, they want you to put this little glass dome on it. This is a hassle, so I just go ahead and glue the open hatch in place instead. For the Land Fortress's main gun, there are three weapon options, and for this, you will want to magnetize. What I use is 4x1mm round magnets. This works really well for this application. You can get this on Amazon. A big problem is this big hole in the gun mount. I resolve this by cutting off a little piece of sprue such as this. I roughly measure the opening in the gun mount, and after that, I cut it to the length required and trim off whatever is left with a knife. I apply plastic glue to one side of the gun mount, and then the little piece of sprue that I cut out will go on that side. I go ahead then and apply glue to the rest of it, and then combine both sides together. With the glue still setting, I push the sprue piece down by at least 2 millimeters. Next, I'm going to use the magnetization jig that I use in the Hearthguard video. I pick one polarity that I'm going to use for the gun mount. I use super glue, not plastic glue for magnets. I then push the magnet in place and then try to center it in the center of the sprue piece. Now I pick the opposite polarity for the weapons. All three weapons will have this polarity so they're able to attach to the gun mount. Go ahead and apply some glue and then slide the magnet onto the back of the gun like this. The cyclic ion cannon does have a little nib that sticks out the back. You will have to cut this off. So carefully with a knife, remove the amount of material that's needed so the back sits flush like this. Then apply super glue to the flat surface and put the magnet on. The weapon mount itself doesn't need to be magnetized. It just keyholes in place such as this. If you magnetize correctly, you are able to change out the front end of the weapon such as this giving you great flexibility in your weapon loadout. Time to start painting. I primed the entire model black, making sure to get into every little detail. Make sure to prime the weapons black as well. You can see that I lightly mounted these hatch weapons onto a painting stick using some super glue. Next, I combine 50%, 50%, gun metal, and flow improver. I mix them up real good, and then I shoot this through my airbrush on all areas that I want to look silver. I mainly do this to the suspension components and the roll cages all around the vehicle. This technique is a real time saver, and you don't have to reach into those hard to reach places to try to place silver down with a brush.
Next, I switched to white primer and a zenithal highlight all the areas that I did not paint silver. Like I mentioned in the Sagittarius video, I am pretty careful about not getting this on the silver areas I had sprayed earlier. However, if you do overspray, it's easy enough just to brush over with silver at a later stage in the process. Time for brushwork. Now I pick my secondary color, which in the case of my army is army green. I thin down the paint enough so that it's slightly runny, and then, with a broad brush, I apply it onto the center of the model. With the paint thinned down to this amount, I didn't have to apply a second coat. I chose to use a brush instead of an airbrush because this allows me a good amount of control over this paint, while an airbrush would have probably oversprayed back onto the silver parts that I completed earlier. My army's primary color is yellow, so I use Zealot Yellow Speed Paint, which works great over big armored panels such as this. The low viscosity of speed paint allows it to spread very easily over big areas. Doing it this way really does save a lot of time. Be sure to paint the upper torsos of the driver and the LCOG units as well. I use Grim Black for the cockpits and all the areas around the driver and the LCOG units. I also use it for the driver's gloves and boots and also his pads. It also goes in the rear weapon hatch. For the main weapon mount, it quickly detaches from the keyhole like this, allowing you to easily paint it. Otherwise, always keep the weapon mount in the keyhole so that no spraying or varnish gets in between the two parts and gums it up. Continue brushing Grim Black on all the weapons. Parts of the roll cage get black as well. I apply hardened leather speed paint onto the restraints, the seat backs, and the hair or cap of the pilot. Crusader skin speed paint goes on the face. Next comes gun metal metallics. I apply this on any areas that I oversprayed in the earlier steps, and I pick out details like pipes and ducts as I go along. The weapons get silver as well. Silver also goes on the Ironkin's arms. The Sponsoon viewports. Restrain buckles. And a few other details. Like before, I used Turbo Dark Radium Paint on all the domed helmets of the Ironkin. I use electric blue acrylic paint on all the screens inside the cockpits. The various light pots around the vehicle also get electric blue. Here I try working the electric blue into the little recesses inside each light instead of just painting over. However, if you really wanted to, to save some time, you can just paint over the whole thing. I also put electric blue on all the viewports in the sponsoons and on the doors. I finish off the blue on the goggles. Like in the Sagittarius video, I use green and orange and I randomly apply them to the buttons and dials inside each cockpit. I use the same two colors on any of the marker lights on the outsides of the vehicle. and on the pan-spectral scanner array. 
I switched to pure red acrylics and I put this on all the warheads of the weapons. Darkstone Army Painter Paint really works well on tires. I apply this color generously with a broad brush. Now onto the slightly trickier part, the glass pieces. I use the same method that I used in my Sagittor video by starting out with white primer. I carefully apply it to all the raised lines on the canopies. I then carefully trace over the lines I had laid down with the primer with my secondary color. In the case of my army, that's army green. I finish off the canopies with brush on matte varnish. This is carefully applied to the painted lines but not onto the glass of the canopies. You should never use aerosol varnish on the canopies as it will very badly fog them. Moving on to washes, I use strong tone on all the areas that I didn't speed paint. This is mainly the roll cage all around the model and along the feature lines of the armor panels. This is a pretty chunky model, so take your time, apply generous amounts of wash and don't hurry this step. Wash the silver on all the weapons as well. For the driver's eyes, I use my usual method of white in the eye sockets, followed by black on the sharp tip of a toothpick for the pupils. The Land Fortress gets quite a few decals and this is applied always in the same way. You cut out the decals that you need, no more than five at a time, Dip in water for 3 to 5 seconds and then using Microset, apply it onto the panel that you want to apply the decal. Transfer the decal to your brush and then onto the panel and then adjust it in place with your brush. Continue doing this on all the rest of the decals. After the decals are done, you'll want to aerosol varnish your model. Do this on everything but the canopies. Use Loctite glass glue, which is a type of non-fogging superglue, to attach the canopies. Do not use plastic glue or regular superglue, or you will badly fog up the glass. After the canopies go on, your Hecaton Land Fortress should be all done. You now have a rolling bastion of firepower ready to rain down hell on all your opponents. With interchangeable weapons on the main gun and the choice of a pan-spectral scanner or deadly warheads in the hatch, you're ready to take on any opponent. Thank you so much for watching. Look out for the next two videos in this two-week series on the Leagues of Votan. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit like subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. Happy wargaming, hobbying, and I will see you the next time.